Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Maxwell Construction, who has been our sponsor since the very beginning. For over 30 years, Maxwell has delivered the highest quality projects by holding to their core values of customer satisfaction, positive attitude, respect, and excellence. So if you have any kind of commercial construction need, give Maxwell Construction a call today at 812-537-2200. Welcome to Rock Solid Radio. This is Merle Hutchinson being joined by my parenting partner in life, Linda Hutchinson. Aww. Linda, how are you? I love that. Parenting partner for life. You like that better than executive director? Yes, I do. I do. Especially oh. the life part. Is Although we have children ranging from 31 to 14. I don't 14. want to be parenting for life, if <laughs> so, that's what you're getting at. We're actually going to be talking about that because we're doing a series of the seasons of parenting, and there's going to be a season where you become a friend. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> there's there's you're hope. Me there's there there is going to be a future there. So tune in, stay tuned. And if you haven't, we've been, um, this is the week two of our series. Yeah. And so uh, much of what we're talking about comes from our work with uh, families and parenting, but it also, we're going to be referencing a lot of uh, John Roseman's work where mm-hmm. we had John on the show. You referenced him mm-hmm. in our last, uh, when we talked about season one. Um, and and so this is an awesome book here, Parenting by the Book. Mm-hmm. And so you can reference a lot of his work there. So some of the terminology that we use uh, is going to be referenced out of there out of that as a resource. But, you know, and I think it's really important to understand like why he referenced them as seasons. Mm. So you can hear of stages and phases Mm -hmm. and all of these different things. And he talked about it as a season and he compared it to that of a farmer and Mm -hmm. farmers being in seasons and in particular seasons, there are particular jobs you do to Mm -hmm. help ensure that you're going to get the most productive and bountiful crop. And so as children are produced by us as parents, you know, what what are we going to develop and grow in them? Mm-hmm. And so we have specific jobs as parents that we do at different seasons. And yeah. so the first one right. was the season of service. Yeah. And, and also in that stage of zero to two, okay, two, three, somewhere in there, we are really focusing on the nurturing and the caretaking and the serving of a child. Mm-hmm. And we talked about last week. And if you haven't listened to last week's show, please go back and tune in because there was some really good stuff. Even if you're out of the the zero to two range, you may have grandchildren or nieces and nephews or neighbors or whatever that are in this stage. And so it's really important to know, like, what is God calling us to do as parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles in this season? And that's really serving the child and taking care of their needs and loving that child so they feel mm-hmm. safe and secure. Yeah. And and even if you are in the season we're going to talk about today, which is the leadership season, okay, three to 13 years of age. I would still recommend that you go Mm, back and you listen to the first one because sometimes the transition gets really sloppy from one season to the next because of emotional attachments, Mm. maybe a distortion in what we think we should be doing. And we kind of muddy it up. And then then all of a sudden we've got an Mm eight-year-old and they're still doing things Mm. uh, and it's not really being productive. And so anyway, it might be a good idea just to listen to that to go, oh, so I needed to bring some of that to an end. (laughs) Yeah. And as a matter of fact, you make a good point there, hon. If we skip a season, then we're going to pay because Mm -hmm. we, we can't rush the seasons we yep. can't skip seasons and so and sometimes we get stuck in a season mm. where we don't allow the child to grow and mature and to go into the next season of life for them and for us as parents and so this is really important that you hear all these seasons and understand their role here's why this is important because you mm-hmm. use the word grow mm-hmm. whether you parent or not <laughs> they are physically going to grow yeah Okay, so they are going to grow and they are going to become adult type people. But whether they are productive, whether they are good uh, contributors mm. to family and the next generation and community, yeah. that it really determines on what you did for them. And so yeah. we run in all the time and, and it's even part of us and no one gets through every <laughs> season perfectly, right? Yeah. That you have some scars, you have some wounds, you've got mm-hmm. some blemishes, you've got little hangups and, and stuff. 
And so you run into adults that have the physical body, but you're like, mm, what's wow. something's missing here, yeah. okay? And so that it's not to beat that up, it's to, to identify it and go, well, wow. maybe we need to go back and do a little bit of work so yeah. we can prune and grow moving forward. So before we get into season two, the season of leadership, which ages around three to 13, mm-hmm. we need to thank some sponsors. And so we wanna thank you know, Casey's Outdoor Solutions and Maxwell Construction for their support of Rock Solid Radio and Rock Solid families which is the parent ministry of rock solid radio and so all of this is because of people in our community who care about these kind of messages and are walking alongside and partnering with us so we want to thank casey's outdoor solutions and maxwell construction also we have an announcement and this is a very Mm. important announcement because Mm. this this series that we're doing is actually (laughs) going to dovetail very nicely into the uh families rock parenting series Mm -hmm. that we are starting September 7th at East Central High School in the Performing Arts Center. And it's going to go every Wednesday through the Wednesdays in September. Mm-hmm. And so uh, did I say 7 to 8.30? 7 to 8.30 <laughs> is the time frame. And so we are going to be covering um, this type of topic, but a lot of other topics. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, we really, this is a great, great opportunity, not just to kind of interact with us and to learn. But we have question and mm-hmm. answer time. So we really want to try to make it valuable to you. And even if uh, we can't answer it in the bigger setting, uh, we're going to make sure that you mm-hmm. get our contact information so that we can yeah. connect with you and help you out through this. But, hon, you got to tell them about some of the other motivations. Yeah. Yeah. So why they should come. this program is being brought to East Central High School in some in St. Leon, Indiana in 2022. By the way, if you're listening in our library, you might be in 2023 already. You but missed out. <laughs> you missed out. But in September, the Wednesdays in September in 2022, we are presenting this Families Rock series thanks to the United Way of Southeast Indiana. Mm-hmm. And so we are presenting this as an incentivized program where families can win prizes, whether it be at dinner out, whether it be movie passes, whether it be adventure experiences like a trampoline park or something, but their classrooms, the child's classroom can win prizes as well. And so we're incentivizing and encouraging teachers as well as empowering and equipping families. And, and it's really just a great time. And we want to thank the United Way because it's because of them we're able to do this and incentivize it. All right. Very, very good stuff. Mm-hmm. So let's get right in. Okay. Let, let's move forward. So we gave a little bit of background as to um, where we got the term seasons and mm-hmm. that type of thing. And uh, I think last time we even talked about in Ecclesiastes 3 1, it says there's a time for everything Hmm. in a season to every activity under heaven. And so that's kind of where a lot of this is prompted as well. But let's move into the second season. Mm -hmm. And so this is the season of leadership and authority, Mm -hmm. right? Leadership and authority. And so just sometimes that's an ugly word, right? Like in today's uh, Mm. times, when you hear of authority, people like right away, ugh. We try to rebel against it. Mm -hmm. And authority is absolutely essential in everyone's life because it gives you a reference point. It gives you a benchmark of either something Mm -hmm. you're trying to work toward or you're something you're trying to avoid. And so it's like police have to have a level of authority. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just chaos. And, you know, everyone's in charge. And then that means everybody gets their way or at least works to get their way. Can we stop here for a second? Because I think this is I think we're going to. (laughs) I think we're going to. I'm pretty sure that's what we're doing. This is a huge issue today. Yeah. I mean, if you're listening, stop and think a second. Where have we fallen off the rails? And I think a huge part of that is the lack of respect for authority. We've got, I would have never, ever, and we've talked about this before in shows, I would have never, ever cussed out a teacher Hmm. or hit (laughs) a principal or, you know, run over a police officer. I would have never done those things because I had this fear of authority. I had this understanding that there were people put in charge of me in my life, different seasons and different things that I was going to respect. And we don't have that anymore. There is no respect for authority I shouldn't say no. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to say any more. Yeah, no but more. I, there's but a definite reduction. Yes. There's a different yes. view to it. I and I think, myself. you know, a lot of that came, you know, we've talked before in the 60s and it was questioning and those kind of things. And and it is healthy to question. We even talk about questioning faith and, mm-hmm. and added, but, but to go through the proper channels and, and of the, the way to get through to the other side, to get the answers in a healthy way. And here's the key. 
to do it in a non-self-serving manner. In a respectful if, way. Right. If I'm all about, I'm going to get the answer mm-hmm. I want for me and only me. <laughs> and so, so much of what we're going to be talking today is um, authority done well, authority done right. And, mm-hmm. that, and, you know, maybe in defense of some of where we've gone off the track is maybe authority has not always mm. uh, been put out there in the right way. Maybe it got messy with authoritarian mm. work. And yeah. so, so important, authority should not be a dirty word, mm. right? Um, but authoritarian is a dirty word. It is a bad word. And so if we don't do authority well, it will come off as authoritarian. We're going to talk a little bit about those differences. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I won't say rightfully so we should be rebelling against it, mm-hmm. but you can see the messes that it has created because now we have lost a general idea mm-hmm. of, of leadership. Yeah. So f- now what we're talking about in season two is establishing the leadership, like Mm -hmm. who's in the home and Mm -hmm. who's leading. And so that whole idea, in order to be in leadership, you have to be able to make the choices, Mm -hmm. right? You have to be able to make decisions. You have to have the vision and these kinds of things. And you've you've used this before, hon, with rules and laws and and why they're in place, you know, and you've talked about speed limits before. And if we don't have Mm -hmm. speed limits or red lights that you ignore. And so, you know, a leader is going to lead well and going to set boundaries and, you know, establish authority in a way that is going to guide and direct our children into a healthy, successful adulthood, right? Not to try to exasperate or, con- right. you know, control or abuse our children. That's not our intention here. Our intention is to guide them. And that's why we have speed limits. That's why we right. have stoplights. Can you imagine if people are driving at whatever speed they feel like it, wherever they want to go, how chaotic and destructive that would be? And that's kind of what we're seeing when we just abdicate the whole idea of authority completely. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're going to ask every parent out there to be able to answer this question. As we come into this season two, Mm -hmm. ages three to 13, this should always be in the back of your head, right? What is, what are you leading your kids to? In other words, what is the vision? What's the roadmap? Where are you trying to raise mm-hmm. them up to? You know, what what do we want them to be like? And if and if that is being dictated, if the roadmap is being dictated by social media, by mm. entertainment, by what your kids see and think is cool, mm-hmm. okay, that is a very messy, hmm. messy roadmap that will literally change by the day. Mm-hmm. That's how fast, you know, the the evolution of these things are and so the idea here is you as a parent you during this stage you have to start to say and you, you're having this conversation with your spouse even prior to marriage hopefully that hmm. you know someday we want our kids to be you won't even have kids yet okay <laughs> but you're going to be grooming this conversation so that by the time these mm-hmm. kids are are starting to interact with you you and your spouse are like you know what we, this is what we want for our kids and this is where you're going to be having mm-hmm. conversations about the types of schools mm-hmm. the types of activities you're going to be involved in the church activity and participation community like well we want to live in this type of neighborhood listen these are legit conversations Mm -hmm. because you're trying to cast vision right um, so that your kids go oh well this is how we work in our home yeah we talk about this in rock solid marriage which is our online couple coaching program we talk about this Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. And so when there's no vision in your home, there's no vision for you as a couple or as a family or in parenting, your children are headed for a train wreck. And so our family's going to quickly fall off the rails. And so we got to have a vision, as you said, hon, so we know where we're leading our kids to and what we want for them in our lives. Yeah. And and you, you kind of helped me along because sometimes I think we <laughs> uh, can get off on a tangent on or look at just one side of this. We have to do this in a, a way of leading, but in a loving and respectful way to yeah. our kids. And yeah. so this starts to bring in that word, like if, if we're doing our authority poorly, Hmm. we will come off as an authoritarian. Mm. And so another sort of way to think about authoritarian is a dictator, Mm -hmm. right? And sometimes you'll hear parents say, well, let's just, I'll let you know this is not a democracy in this house. This is a (laughs) dictatorship. And and I I get Mm. that completely. Sounds funny, but. Yeah. mm. But the idea here is we are going to lead with strength. Mm -hmm. We're going to lead with authority. That means we still honor the people there, mm-hmm. but we constantly, at the end of the day, the kids know 
that we are the ones yeah. leading because we're not fickle. Right. We're, we're not, we do show the vision. We don't mm-hmm. keep it hidden as to where we're trying to go. We do show them so that everybody can be active in seeking the same trail mm-hmm. that you're on. Okay. So it's very important that you do not turn into a hostile dictator, hmm. but instead you say, Hey, you know, um, we are doing this because mom mm-hmm. and I had, we have come to this idea that mm-hmm. this is the right way. Yeah. And so, and that's a whole other, how you came to that idea. Yeah. That's where God's word comes yeah. in. So authoritarian is that dictator. It's kind of like yelling and screaming your way, your rules. Authoritative is more of almost like modeling it is with love in leadership. You are showing your children where you want them to go because you're leading the way mm-hmm. and you're doing it with, like you said, strength and authority. Okay. You're not waffling, but you're not yelling and screaming either and there is this love you're speaking the truth in love the bible Mm -hmm. says to do and that's what we're asking you to do as a parent please don't waffle from what truth is speak the truth in love and help your kids in this really really important season of parenting during this season i am going to very much encourage you to stop second guessing yourself in your Mm. parenting Think about a leader and think about when there's crisis and if all of a sudden that leader starts to shake and question himself Mm. in the middle of the battle, in the Mm -hmm. middle of the work. And so at that point, you become fickle, you become emotional, and the chore that you're trying to get done becomes distracted Mm -hmm. or even falls apart. So the idea here is you come together on decisions on how you're going to do things. And it doesn't even mean they have to be right, perfectly right all the time. It just means like, this is how we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Now, at some time you go back and you readdress it and you own what was was right, what was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And and you readjust, but you readjust with purpose versus on the fly and the kids making emotional statements and then you're getting panicked. And so now you got this (laughs) three-year-old that is dictating. Yeah how things are going to go in the house. And by the way, when you blow it, Why are you, you pointing will. your finger at me? Stop pointing your finger at <laughs> Maybe me. Maybe they're just listening and not watching. <laughs> I was just trying to stay. You will blow it. You and yep. I have blown it many times. And mm-hmm. there is something so powerful than circling back around and say, you guys, you're right. I, I blew that. I lost my stack or I lost my cool or, you know, and I'm sorry. That was wrong of me. And so you need to show your kids that. Like, you don't have it all together. You're not always right. And you're going to admit when you're wrong because you're going to ask them to do the same, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay, so in season one, we are serving. Now mm-hmm. we, as as season two comes, we are now leaders, okay? But now I want you to think about this. This is why we are faith-based mm-hmm. here, guys. Mm-hmm. And this is why we we know this to be right and important because we've seen it happen the other way. We as Christians are called to serve. Mm. Christ did not came, come to be served, but to serve. Mm. And so I always look at you know Christ as he was the messenger that was showing us um, how God's way is mm-hmm. in nature. And so he did not come and sit on a throne <laughs> and say, Kiss everybody serve me. Yes, he said, guys, if you're going to do this well, mm-hmm. you're going to have to learn to serve mm-hmm. others. That's how we build community and societies in a healthy way. That's how the human um, population grows successfully. Okay? So in our library, there was a show we did on chores and allowances and stuff like that. And we really encourage parents in this season to show your children how to serve others and how to be responsible for chores and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we had the the craziest pushback from a group of moms who felt like we were turning our children into slaves and literally said, like, that's your job. Your job is to do for them. And I was like, holy cow. Like, when they're mm-hmm. two, maybe. Not when they're 10. Yeah. And so I, I really want you to think about that. Like, what are you going to develop as a child and becoming an adult if you're always serving them, mm-hmm. if you're always doing for them? Because you're going to have an entitled <laughs> 18, 20-year-old who says, Mom, I don't have any clean laundry. Mom, we don't have any food in the house. And if you're hearing that from a child who could do for themselves and maybe as an adult living in your home, you've created that. Well, I think it is very typical 
when people get uh, alarmed about certain messages, mm. they generalize and they want to throw the entire message out. And so mm. right away in their brain, they see mom or dad coming up from work, kicking up um, mm. their feet on the couch, getting a, a cold drink. Being abusive. And, then, and just starting ordering mm-hmm. and dictating to the kids and the parents do nothing. That is That's th- that is throwing saying. the baby out with the bathwater. Mm-hmm. That is exactly the destructive thinking pattern that gets us in these these terrible places. And so, no, we are Mm-mm. we are still as parents always called to serve. What we're doing now is training. Though mm-hmm. part of our service is training them to be knowing, mm-hmm. serving, what it looks like, what it Not feels slaves, like. Slaves. Yeah, and serving so, one another in love. So it means we continue to serve, but now we share the service mm-hmm. and the idea here that I should at times. Okay, well, I think it's very important, um, and uh, you and I have said this, we have never asked our kids to do something here that we we don't do. I mean, literally, Mm -hmm. if I am having our kids out in the yard working, Mm -hmm. I'm not in the house sitting. I am out busting it, and I'm... If if we're sweeping the garage, I'm sweeping with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so... Or I'm cleaning it while you're sweeping it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, does that mean that I should... uh, um, you know, I can never sit down and they can't serve me. No, mm-hmm. like they, if I sat down and said, Hey, you know, um, do me a favor and, and get me a Coke or something like that's an expectation that should be okay. All right. They're not a slave when you ask them to do that. Uh, because at times you're going to reciprocate mm-hmm. and you're still showing them mm-hmm. that this is a mutually beneficial right. servant. Right. For sure. So, you know, household household chores are important. Taking care of their own hygiene, whether it be, you know, when will that happen? <laughs> If, we, we have <laughs> okay we have four boys you know and even the navy could not kind of do that in some of them and so they could do it well enough to pass inspection yeah that's about it yeah. but you know so doing their own laundry you know taking mm-hmm. care of cleaning the room you know um brushing their teeth like i'm not yep. going to do that for you those are things that you should do to take care of yourself and to take care of your room and those things yeah you know? Yeah, and another huge part of this is, you know, when you're talking about serving people, what you're doing is you're allowing a hierarchy of importance in relationships. You're that other people have value too, mm-hmm. right? Versus you are the only one. That's the terrible two, right? The only one of value. <laughs> the world revolves is around me. me. <laughs> so this is where, you know, parents, you are really working the manners. Mm-hmm. You know, I know for a long time the whole th- thing of manners just got real old fashioned mm-hmm. or something. And people yeah. are like, you know, they don't need to call me Mr. and Mrs. You don't have to say please and thank you. It should just be expected. You know, and, and that's terrible. And it's terrible because it puts everybody on an equal playing ground. And it, we're not on equal playing ground because some people have this wonderful thing called wisdom and life mm-hmm. experience. And we want to honor that because that's what's going to help us learn and mm-hmm. grow to the next stage in our life. So mm-hmm. even to this day, when I'm talking to your parents or to my parents, I, I listen Mm-hmm. I honor them by saying, hey, what do you think? And I'm yeah. respecting them because they're experiencing part of a stage of life that I haven't walked through yet. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't, I can only dream and think about what it actually feels like. Yeah. And, and we're in a difficult mm-hmm. time right now. We're mm-hmm. learning what they're actually experiencing and we have to take it in. Yeah. You know, one of the um, coolest things is when your child is interacting with another adult and then that adult comes back and says, wow, he was very polite and he was mm-hmm. very respectful and he was very helpful and it was like oh we're doing something right <laughs> <laughs> they do it better outside of the house than in the house which is no. that is often typical too okay mm. that you know your your kids can maybe get a little comfortable with you and they know what buttons mm. to push in your house but when they step out of the house they, they really step mm-hmm. up their game and i think that that's them understanding um the time yeah. and the place. That's a good point you bring up there about getting too comfortable because mm-hmm. we can be very sarcastic with one another. Mm-hmm. And so if we kind of get sarcastic and kind of let get flippant with our kids and all of a sudden they're like, hey, Merle, what are you doing? Oh, we got to be really careful that we have that line that I'm still your dad. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you're still to respect me and I'm still an authority over you. And so we kind of encourage that sometimes in parents and families. And it really doesn't end well because all of a sudden you lose that leadership and authority in the home. So be really careful of how flippant you get in how you talk to one another. Yeah, because kids kids don't know exactly when to bring it back. Yeah, and, they don't know uh, how to reel know, it in. Part of, you know, I love to wrestle and play around mm-hmm. and, and our younger son and I are constantly smacking each other around and talking a 
little smack. And in that moment, it's a lot of fun and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, But if they Mm -hmm. don't always read your mood and 20 (laughs) minutes later they do the same thing and it's inappropriate, you kind of have to help them like, okay, wait, Mm -hmm. time and place. Um, yeah. So yeah, you have to be aware of that. That, but that's you're the leader, you're the adult. Right. So you have right. to figure it out probably one step ahead of them in those situations. Yeah. And so again, we know that this isn't like a light switch that just like all of a sudden, poof, everybody's following you. Mm. Okay, this is a slow progression, and that's why we called it the terrible twos. And we said last week that there's this real transition period. We can't give you a set time where your child is going to know better. They're going to be able to listen to you, Mm -hmm. and they can understand that no should mean no, okay? And at some point, we want you to say no. No, Mm -hmm. you're not running across that street. No, you're not climbing up on that table. No, you can't have that extra cookie. And so you've got to establish authority as being the leader. Okay. And so this transition here of the world doesn't revolve around you anymore. Okay. That was the first season where we took care of you and we served your needs and we, we jumped when you cried, but now we're going to start to real, make you realize like, there is a family here and we're working together as a family and we're going to cooperate and help each other as a family. Like you said, you just sat down after cutting the grass and they get you a drink. Well, maybe your son has his hands full and he needs help you picking something up that fell. So we're going to help each other as a family. Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of, uh, I think, misconceptions on where self-esteem come from, Mm. where self-worth come from. And there's been a lot of this talk about how we as parents give our kids self-esteem that's just misguided. Mm. What happens here is your kids have to, every person has to feel like they add value to mm-hmm. the, the place that they live, all right? Mm-hmm. Their, their life. Like, and if they just add value to themselves, others will quickly reflect to them that they are valueless, mm. all right? We get value from how we interact and serve mm. others. Mm-hmm. If we just serve ourselves, other people will shut us out because mm. they'll be like, well, I don't need to be in a relationship with yeah. you. You're selfish. Mm-hmm. And so what we're really talking here during this age of three to 13 is helping them learn how mm. to add value to something outside of themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's where self-worth comes from, mm. okay? The value is what are we worth, mm. all right? And now this is, we, we're not asking our kids to get all their value from just work, 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 and, <laughs> and be a pleaser, right? No. Like a, a yeah. people pleaser, that everything can be taken mm-hmm. to extremes and that's dangerous as well. But the idea that they are willing to add value to whatever they walk in. Mm-hmm. Now, there's the self-esteem side. And for years, we've told kids that, you know, uh, we have to tell them that they're great at things. We have to tell them that they're good. And there's a time and a place to definitely praise your kid. And Mm -hmm. we're not saying not to praise your kid, all right? But if your kid's esteem, their self-esteem is only based off of your words, Mm. that's going to be a dangerous place because what if your words don't feed them well? Mm -hmm. What if the people that they hang around? And so our self-esteem comes from our own personal accomplishments of capability. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I proved to myself that I can work. Mm-hmm. Hey, I proved to myself that I can take care of people. Mm-hmm. I proved to myself that I am valuable. Mm-hmm. And that's where that self-esteem comes from. And so this thir- this three to 13 age group is so much of this, your kids mm-hmm. getting exposed to opportunities to grow and serve others and really prove that mm-hmm. they're capable. Yeah. They are capable. Yeah. All right. And this is a, we don't even have this in our notes, but it just made me think about this. This is where rescue parenting really comes into play. Mm. If you're constantly rescuing your child and not allowing them to learn and to grow and to work through adversity, okay, then they'll never get that. It yeah. really does come from the pressure and the pain of difficulty, conflict, you know, yeah. learning and growing and yeah. persevering through it. We feel better when we had a really tough workout and it was really hard practice practice, but we survived. Not when mommy said, oh, coach, they're tired and they're hot. You need to stop. That's not where you're going to help them build self-worth. And so please, please don't rescue your child from difficult situations because that's exactly the thing where they're going to experience what their identity is and their purpose is and and what God's doing in their life. So please, please don't do that. Yeah. Okay. So a couple cautions during this, this season. All right. Um, we're always talking about balancing, as you talked a little bit earlier, hun, about truth and love. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is not a degrading 
All right. There's a very, very big difference between disciplining our children and degrading our children. Or false inflating. So, yeah, I've yeah. seen the other like side. There's as other well. extremes, right? Yeah. So, we do this in love, mm-hmm. and, but we deliver the truth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I, I used to get a publication every uh, month when I was working in schools called Fair, Firm, and Consistent. Ooh, okay? it was actually a publication? It was a publication. And, uh, Counselors I, I just would, read it? I would get a lot. Of, <laughs> well, teachers could get it too. And I would get a lot of publications, and I would say that many of them were just very like, oh my gosh, who, who thought this was a good idea? Okay, which encouraged a lot of enabling and things like that. Mm-hmm. But Fair, Firm, and Consistent, that whole title, uh, and that was a very good publication, because it, it was much more in the growth mindset of parenting mm-hmm. of, okay, yeah, encourage your kids, but let your kids fail, mm-hmm. right? They're not going to be perfect. Fall. They're mm-hmm. between age three and 13. Guess what? <laughs> between three and 18, they're going to drive you crazy with how often they <laughs> fall. But you are going to continue to let them mm. experience those consequences, and then you're going to help get them through mm-hmm. by challenging and encouraging, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so fair, firm, and consistent. And I think that those are really mm-hmm. important words to balance yeah. in this stage. You know, I would add two more words to it, hon, that I think is really important and we're not helping our kids do do this well is feel and deal. Okay. Why are you upset? Why are you crying? Why are you mad right now? Okay. Let's put some words to it, feel it. And then what are you going to do about it? Okay. Mm. How are you going to deal with it? Okay. You're going to go and pout. You're going to punch a wall or, I mean, what is What are the ways? And so our job is to lead them into healthy coping skills to work through the emotion, not just stuff it, not just pretend that everything's okay, but but be consistent in showing them coping skills to understand, to feel and deal with emotions. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like yeah. that. You didn't put that in the notes. I didn't put that, that in the either. No, but as yeah. you're saying, it just made me it's think, good. like, that's yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, you know, not getting too one-sided in one area or the other um, of consequences and rewards. The carrot um, and uh, the stick. That we do the carrot and the stick. Mm-hmm. And this whole idea that everything has to be rewards-based is just mm-hmm. not being helpful. Okay? It's, it's doing nothing more than allowing your kid to live in a very false world. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I've not been rewarded every <laughs> second of every day. And I, so I need to learn to deal with the consequences. You know, and nature will give you natural consequences. That, that reminds me, when I taught junior high, I, I, I did a bad thing and I brought in candy. And I would give. You still I would, do that. Well, hang on. I don't teach anymore. <laughs> but um, when I was in a classroom, I would just throw like little Jolly Ranchers out and they for, would bark. for answers. Yeah. And, and then I put the Jolly Ranchers away. And they were like, well, where's the candy? Yeah. Uh, I'm not yeah. going to give you an answer unless you give me candy. And I was like, oh, crud. I just kind of lopsided the the reward, the carrot, right? Mm-hmm. And when we're, we're talking about stick, we're not talking about beating your child with a right. stick. But we're right. talking about consequences for bad decisions and, you know, poor poor answers or not poor answers poor decisions that they make yeah yeah so again we're not throwing the baby out with the bath water we work the balance and Mm -hmm. and so you know be aware of how you're balancing those things Mm -hmm. um you know i think an important part in every home is is uh, and i didn't even put this word in but i want to add this word is it's not in the notes Gosh. Okay. No, I'll put it in the next show. The, the idea that we, we have fun and enjoyment and humor. Mm. You know, so many homes um, lack in these areas and broken mm-hmm. homes often, like where there's mm-hmm. divorce and breaking, that fun and enjoyment and that humor gets really distorted. Mm. And, you know, humor is one of the best medicines. Mm-hmm. Um, having fun, you know, we have to build some of that in. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes I, I've I I never realized this would happen to me because as a kid I always liked playing, <laughs> and I don't play as often like with mm. our kids, yeah. you know, uh, because well we've got work to do, we've mm-hmm. got work to do, we've got work to do, and our kids are still craving. They want to see the fun kid in you. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want you to be the adult, but they want to see you smile. They want to see yeah. you laugh. They want to see that you have joy. And I think that there's a value to that. Yeah. And, and so sometimes you know what we're not going to do. Uh, we're not doing yard work today. Yeah. Uh, instead, we are going to go do something fun. And you're yeah. better at providing like the idea to do that. Well, than I in do. three to thirteen, you really have to take advantage of this. We tried to play cards the other night with our teenagers, and they were like, "Are we done yet?" I mean, yeah. they were like wanting to go on a screen, and, and it made me so yeah. sad, you know. And it's like we need to really 
create this atmosphere. This is part of our DNA as a family that we play games or cards or that we go on walks and hikes and, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll go to the pool together or whatever. And so we've got to create that fun environment. So they feel like they have memories of enjoyment with you, Mm. not just being told what to do. Yeah. Yeah. The last area is that whole idea. uh, That last caution area is grace. Mm. It's grace. Um, you know, they are kids. We said that before. Mm-hmm. They're going to make mistakes. Um, I used to get upset working with uh, in certain situations because um, parents would misbehave. Hmm. <laughs> um, and because it's harder, uh. because you're like, you're an adult. You should know better. <laughs> but kids misbehave too, mm-hmm. right? And we have to give them that grace to get through it. That doesn't mean allowing misbehavior. It means understanding that it mm-hmm. happens and then get a system in your brain and your family for how you're going to work through to give that grace um, so that they is in Colossians 3 21 it says Mm -hmm. fathers do not embitter your children Mm -hmm. or they will become discouraged and you know sometimes that's a fine line sometimes you got to bend the spirit a little bit without breaking it and so Mm -hmm. you have to as parents I find that very much like Mm -hmm. trying to keep your eye like you might say well these are the rules Mm -hmm. and some days you got to look at your kids and go maybe today is not the day to deliver the rule yeah. the way I have in the past. It's been a rough day. Yeah. So as we wrap up, our challenge is this. So, you know, really evaluate what season of parenting you're in. Okay. Are you in this leadership season where your child should start to do for themselves and start to serve one another and start to kind of cooperate as a family? And if they are, I need you to get with your spouse or get with the other parent Here's a part of the problem, hon, is when we have co-parenting situations where we have different families in a blended mm. family or divorced family or single parenting, when they got grandparents and a lot of other voices into this mix, it really gets very confusing for kids. Who do I listen to? Mm-hmm. Who do I follow? Who's the authority in my life? So let's be really clear and get that kind of cleared up as much as you can that's under your control and let those kiddos know, mm. like when you're at your babysitter's house or when you're at grandma's house. Like, and so they know these are the voices that are leading and guiding me. Yeah. Hannah, I want to make a, a statement about uh, awareness. And that is, you know, in the first season, zero to two or three ish in that area, virtually no child has a memory of that. Mm. Um, and, and so <laughs> you can do some wrong things. And but it's there's not, still it's an important good. season to caretake oh. and love and nurture them. Yeah, right? yeah because it's life dependent. Yes. Okay. But what happens in this season that Mm. we're talking about today is these are the first memories. And so if you ever (laughs) think about it, the very first time you do something, the very first time you see the mountains, the very first time Hmm. you you jump in a swimming pool, it has the greatest impact Mm. because of its newness, its novelty, all right? And so it has an emotion attached to it. And so this is the ages of 3 to 13 where you are Mm. going to create lasting memories, memories yeah. right? And so doing this well, mm. all of a sudden you'll talk to a, a person when they're in their 30s mm. and they'll say something like, I had a good childhood. Mm. And doing this not so well, mm. you'll hear uh, kids, you'll hear adults say, my childhood was kind of rough or my mm. childhood wasn't good. It's all because of what we're doing in the right parenting now. realm and this Yep. this season. So yep. be aware, these are where the memories are coming. Mm-hmm. And so what are you going to put in their memory bank? Yeah, so make sure that you are a united front, whoever that is in the authority of your children, that you have those conversations privately, not in front of them, but privately on where are you guiding them? What's the mm-hmm. vision you have? What are the values you're gonna fight for in this season of parenting? So hopefully we it's been valuable. Um, This is season two. Next week, uh, we're getting on to where we are right now with our youngest two, and that is Hmm. the season of mentoring, Mm -hmm. ages 13 to 18. So hopefully you'll tune in and stay tuned to all of it. And again, if you haven't listened to last week's, check it out before you move on to the next week. All right. So again, we want to thank uh, our sponsors, Casey's Outdoor Solutions and Maxwell Construction for coming alongside of us. We Mm -hmm. also want to thank all of you out there uh, that are listening that are sharing our shows, that are giving us phone calls, that are communicating with us. Please, we we Mm -hmm. appreciate that, but we appreciate it because we want to continue to serve and we want to uh, get this kind of message Mm -hmm. of of family and parenting and marriages. We just believe it's uh, of utmost importance. So thank you for what you're doing there. Please give us those five.
five star ratings and share the shows. And if we can help you or your family or someone that you know, you can contact us at rocksolidfamilies.org. And you can also learn about our parenting class, fa- Families Rock Parenting Class, coming in September at East Central High School in St. Land, Indiana. Um, or you can call our office at 812 576 Rock. That's 812 576 7625. All right. Thanks again for listening to Rock Solid Radio, building a stronger community one family at a time. Make it a great day. Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions. Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They offer a wide selection of high quality plants, landscaping materials, and home decor. They do amazing high quality work and can help you transform your indoor and outdoor living spaces into something beautiful. So stop by Casey's Outdoor Solutions today and let them know you appreciate their support for Rock Solid Radio. Visit Casey's today at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. 